doesn't know, this is my good friend Fredwina. She helps me with my costume videos. Um, if you want to check those out, feel free to look at my channel. Um, and Fredwina is excellent at her job. So the first thing that she needs are some drawers. Now I don't have drawers. I didn't make the undergarments for this. But my husband has some shorts. So we're going to put those on her. I'll probably fast forward this part because putting drawers on a dress form is awkward. Alright, so Fredwina's got her drawers. I should say apricot because Fredwina is going to be apricot, my protagonist today. So apricot's got her drawers now. And the next thing she needs is a chemis. I don't have a traditional chemis, but I do have a slip. And we're going to put the slip on her. Because it, a slip is basically the modern version of a chemis. It's just that this one is made with synthetic materials. Which, if you look at the chart at the end, I've talked about which materials would have been used. Alright, so now she's got her drawers and her chemis. She is in her underwear. Not naked anymore. Now, Apricot is the princess, so she's a crinoline. And we're just going to throw this over. Put that on here. So that's going to help the dress pull out. I'm going to actually bring her forward a bit. So that's going to help with the volume of the dress. And it's sideways. There we go. And this one, it's not as puffy as it usually is because I just pulled it out of the backpack. I moved and I couldn't figure out all day where I put it. But it is just lots of layers very stiff too. All right. Now we're getting into the fun stuff. And I've got it here, but now we've got to put it on her. So let me take the ring-like crown and the belt. The belt's not typical. That's an apricot personal. Okay, and the ribbon of the overdress. Unfortunately, I need the yellow part, and the yellow part's under everything else. So we're just going to take the hanger out and let that fall through and get these sleeves. Apricots into the flowy sleeves. That's what she would have her designer make. She would not let the designer choose. She would rather tell the designer what to do. She's a little bit bossy. She knows what she likes. She knows what she wants. Until it comes to men, then she's got it. So the dress is just very simple. It is just a top, a bottom, and this bottom is a full circle. I actually made it out of a tablecloth because it's cheaper than buying other fabric and easier because then it's already hidden. So we're going to throw that over the top. This. The other tricky part with a dress form is they're not as squishy and malleable as the actual human body. So things that you know fit them are sometimes still tricky to get on them. And seeing as I used this dress form to help me 
design and sew this entire thing. I know that it fits. It's just the shoulders and the bust are very hard. And very hard to get the clothes over. There we go. Let's move this with that chatness out a little bit. Let's see what's not. So there's that. And then the next layer would be the corset. Um, this is the zipper corset. I did not make this. Um, I bought it and then I dyed it to be a light blue. Apricot loves her pastel colors. She loves being a woman. She's very girly. Um, but she does enjoy sword sparring. And so that is her one non-girly attribute, and she is dang good at it. She does get to slay a dragon, and she does get into a couple of different sword fights, one of which she loses and one of which she wins, um, of the main ones. There are, there, there is kind of a montage of where she is sparring other people because they didn't know she could and then uh, she became friends with a blacksmith named Sam who um, she challenged to a spar after getting caught just in his workshop checking out all the swords and then everyone challenges her and she just keeps beating them uh, the person that she does lose to, she only loses because she is suffering already from severe starvation and dehydration at the moment when that happens. And that one she almost dies from. I mean, spoilers, but not because, like, that's not very far into the book when that happens. All right, so there's that part. And these sleeves, they look like they're super long, but they actually only go to about right here, and then they just hang down from there, because they open up right there. So the sleeves are actually only that long on her arm, so they don't really get in the way. And I made them a little too long. I think she would actually have them open right at the shoulder, but I didn't want to fix it once I made it because I was following a different pattern that looked right at the time. But you know, and I mean, I follow a pattern, followed a pattern, but it was really just a picture on Pinterest and that had a different language, and I couldn't really read it. Okay, and now the overdress. The overdress has an ornate design on it. Um, because she is royal, so she would be able to afford a fancy weave like that. And it is double layered on the top. I have this cute forest animal. Uh, there's little squirrels in there um, on the inside. And frankly, I put that because she exists in a, in a storybook. So. So we're going to take this, and I might have to undo some of this lacing. The lacing is the trickiest part of this whole thing, because you need it to be nice and loose. Um, Apricot, as a princess, would have lots of lady servants, and she would basically get sewn into this overdress, or whichever overdress she is um, wearing. This is just the one that she's wearing when the inciting incident happens. So I like to think it's her signature dress. Um, hold up there, baby boy. Stop kicking. Oh, he's, he's stretching. He's pushing on me. Okay. Um, so she would basically get sewn into whichever thing she is wearing that day. 
Um, in a sense. Some, I mean sewn by the ribbons being sewn back and forth with the needle, which I actually have to do in order to get this on Farina. So you'll see how that looks and how that works. So, there we go. And I had, I decided for the ribbon to be blue to match the corset. Let's smooth out this. Um, when I made this, in case you're here just for the costume bit, when I made this, I actually used the balloon holding stick and sewed them in because I didn't have any fake boning and my little Idaho town didn't have any fake boning either. <laughs> so yeah, let me get my tapestry needle so we can finish sewing her in. In case you are curious, a tapestry needle is a huge needle. So I'm just going to grab this one, which is ginormous, and I'm going to stick the ribbon through the end and go through the eyelets that I've made. I turned her around for a second, just so you can see the camera. All right, so that is what you're left with, and I'm going to put my tapestry needle down for just a second. And then the trick is to tighten, tighten, tighten. And as you tighten the bottom, the middle and top are going to become more loose. So you can imagine the difficulty this would be to get the royal princess dress for the second one. I think I messed up in a couple places, but I'm going to call that good. And then with the excess ribbon, just tie it up. Right here. And down in the middle, you want to nice and long loops. And then this dress is like that. I'm just going to move the camera down a bit so you can see how wide the dress is. It would drag on the ground. And then the other things, the accessories, I actually haven't gotten to put on her before because I literally just bought this last time I went to the thrift store. Finally saw a belt that matched her one in the book. Um, I do think she would have a silver buckle, not a brass buckle, but that is the the point. So she would have this not super tight but not super loose either. Uh, tighter than that. And again, she's really into her colors. She loves a good rainbow kind of look. So she would have that there. And then I don't have a sword that looks like her sword, but I do have a sword. And she would hang her sword. Yeah, she's right handed. 
So she would hang her sword on the belt. I should have put it on. And undo the belt. I should have practiced this, but I mean, I only want to do it once, so. This is not the kind of sword she has. She has a, an arming sword, and the sheath would match her belt. But I only have this sword, and it's in a wooden scabbard. And her sword also wouldn't have tassels on the end. Um, she actually, her sword's really important to the story. There we go. Let's take the tassels off if that's going to bug me. But she wields a steel arming sword that has silver laid into the handle and a ruby right in the tip of, right in the pommel right here. And that, again, it would be in a red scabbard or a red sheath, not a scabbard. Scabbards are wood, sheaths are leather or cloth, and hers would have pretty designs on it uh, with probably flowers and leaves because it would be a custom made sword since that is her hobby. Her cloak, her cloak, her cloak. I'm going to have to edit this into the right spot. So she has a blue cloak. Uh, it's similar to this. This is too short, but it's similar to what she would wear. It's, it's only slightly too short, but then the hood is too big. So yeah, that's, that's the cloak she would wear. Okay, and the last part would be the ringlet, which I will put on myself because I don't feel like getting out my foam head and the wig. But it just goes right like that. So this is Apricot, my protagonist. And she has quite a personality. So, yeah, that's what people in my book wear. This is what my MC wears when she has a choice over what she wears. Um, and I'd like to thank you for watching this video. I know it's a long one. I might have divided it into two parts. I don't know. So, um... I would just like to say, don't forget to stay creative. Thanks for watching. Bye. On a side note, it's so exciting to see the belt on this because I haven't had the belt on it before and I feel like that completes it.